Um, hello and welcome everybody to our webinar. Today we are going to talk about best practices in implementing container promotion image container image promotion pipelines. It's a lot, but we'll unpack it and it's not a big deal. So first of all, they said containers in a title, but all the market researches show that still 90% of the market, when they talk about containers, they actually mean Docker. There are others like Podman and a couple of others, but still Docker completely um, uh, uh, dominates the market. So today, when we're going to talk about container, we are actually going to talk about Docker. Um, and generally speaking, but also with Docker, that's a Venn diagram of the relationship between the uh, between the software that we know and the software that we like. It's a lot like visiting the sausage factory. Once you know how the sausage is made, you might have a little bit less of a, a fan of uh, eating sausages. It's the same with software. The deeper you dive into almost any software, the, the horror, um, the horror um, shows. So it's true for, for, for Docker as well. And one of the issues with Docker is the issue of trust. I mean, a lot, and we hear that a lot in JFrog, a lot of times there is like a big question, do we really know what runs in our, um, in our containers, in our production? Uh, my name is Baruch Sadogurski. I'm the Chief Sticker Officer of JFrog, also Head of DevOps Advocacy in JFrog. Um, on this slide is my Twitter handle. Let's connect there at jbaruch. Ping me if you have any questions. This is uh, my California disclaimer. Um, you can see that the most emotionally expressive and confrontational people in the world are from Israel and Russia. I managed to be from both. That might explain some of my attitudes. So I don't apologize about it, by the way. That's a great chart from a great book called The Cultural Map by Irene Meyer. Um, since all of us work in multicultural environment, I highly recommend you reading this book. And this is the most important slide for today's webinar. If you go to Jeffrey Holmes' show notes, you will find the slides which are already there, or the video that we will upload once, um, once it's ready, um, and all the links, including Culture Map, but also everything that I'm going to uh, speak about this point forward, um, and a place for comment, to rate, and a small raffle for thank you for being here today. So when we talk about stuff like we have this new thing and we need to understand how we do it, first we'll look at the existing patterns. And we talk about promotion for uh, containers. We ask ourselves, do we know how to promote other stuff? And the answer is hell yes. We know how to promote stuff because we do CI CD pipelines for years, namely for more than 20 years, by by now the first build servers nightly builds and all this stuff actually um, came into existence in the late uh, in the late 90s and that's more than 20 years ago <coughs> this is how it looks like we have this promotion pyramid in which we actually have builds which are tested more and more rigidly throughout the pipeline and less and less builds survive those tests up until we have this um, peak of the pyramid, which is the production servers, to which just a handful of builds arrive, and this is fine. If we look at the same, it's a, a, on, on a kind of the same promotion from the side, then you see that how you uh, have your sources, your application sources, and your Docker files, and your YAML files, and whatever, and they are all uh, translated to binaries very, very early, just this is what the build does. And once the uh, binaries are created, then we will have the promotion of those binaries through those quality gates, those locks, and those are the tests that we are running. So we have artifacts, we deploy them into the right environment, the runtime servers, integration, system testing, staging, etc. We test them rigidly on those servers, and then we decide whether we should promote them to the next stage, 
to the next environment really and to the next area in our pipeline that will correspond to the next environment. Now, with Docker, it's both very easy to do the, right, the wrong thing and very hard to do the right thing when we talk about pipelines, and this is exactly the problem. And here is what I mean by that. Why it's easy to do the right thing, the wrong thing, because Docker build. Docker build, it's very simple and very powerful concept. In the just a few lines in your Docker file, you're able to construct a container which will do the right thing. And then you go like, well, let's just Docker build all the things. Building Docker images in each and every environment instead of promoting one image that you built in the beginning seems easy, by far much more easy than promoting existing Docker image and also seems reliable enough because Docker build produces the same Docker image every time. Or is it? Here is an example of a Docker image that I just found on the internet. And what astonishing in this example is that every line in this Docker image is actually a dependency on the latest version of something. So this is grab the latest version of Ubuntu. This is grab the latest version of Node.js. This is grab the latest version of Python. And this is grab the latest version of our app. You can see the problem. Chances are that when you're going to rebuild, you will actually have different, slightly different images every time. And if you are rebuilding in different environments in your pipeline, you will test not the same that you built and you will deploy the production, not what you have tested. And that's obviously horrible. Now you can say, well, this is just a very poor example. How about we fix it? Let's try and fix it. For example, we can nail the version of the base image. You can say, well, here you go. Now you have a version. Every time we pull the base image, it will be exactly the same base image. Is it? No, because Docker tags are mutable. You can actually create run Docker build with the same tag and then deploy it to Docker Hub or any other registry, and it will just override the existing version with new set of bytes under the same version. It's a bad idea, but it's also a trade-off because there are some people that will never update and we need to find a way to push security updates to them, but it is what it is. How can we guarantee really immutable base images? Well, we can use SHA-2 or fingerprint or checksum. This is reliable, but the problem is that this is not very useful, usable. Do you know which version of Ubuntu I rely on now? Do you even know that it's a valid checksum and not my cat went here over the keyboard and this is what it typed? We have no idea. So this is a little bit better. But what about those? Can you nail down the version of Python Node.js? The answer depends on how well you know apt-get. It might be possible, it might not. How about that? How well do you know Maven? How well do you know Java? Do you know if it's possible to nail down the versions in Maven, especially of the transitive dependencies? If you, know, if you don't know Maven, you say, I don't know. If you know Maven, you say, yes, you can. If you know Maven good enough, you say, well, I don't know. So. How about this? How about just downloading stuff from the internet? How do we know that this stuff won't change under our fingers? What I mean by that is that you don't, you cannot really be certain that what you build in your development environment, what you build in your test environment, and what you build in your production environment are actually the same images or are they different? And this is exactly 
why we don't we have this nagging feeling of something is not 100% reliable so instead what we need to do we need to build immutable and stable promotion pipelines that work with immutable and stable binaries what we want to do is this we build only once and then we go and we promote those docker containers from pre-built images from one environment to another the same image from one to another through those quality gates and i keep speaking about those quality gates because quality gates are extremely imp important because the gates guarantee that we won't test something that shouldn't be tested and most importantly we won't get into production something that shouldn't be in production and how can we guarantee that that we build strong pipeline with strong quality gates basically when we ask this question how do we build a pipeline with strong quality gates we ask a question of how do we separate development from production and there are a couple of ways to do it with docker the most uh, i would say uh, in your face way is using labels labels are metadata tags that you can put on your docker images and they have like those key value string key value pairs and then key can be maturity and value can be dev or qa or staging or production the problem with this approach is that then your environments when they pull the image must check if those labels are set up correctly and since they're all string based errors will occur you will forget to check stuff you will check for wrong stuff instead of maturity you will look for a stage this kind of stuff St just string labels that cannot be enforced on the receiving side are not good enough another option is using docker repositories docker repositories on the paper look good they have arba control role-based authentication and that means that you can uh, limit different environments to access only different repositories isn't that what we look for well not really and the problem is that the repositories in docker are mapped under the concept of repositories in git in github in gitlab whatever you're using and you can see an example here moby the whale is the name of the repository because the repositories are intended for different projects that's exactly like it is in github in github you don't have repositories for testing staging and production because there is no difference in the code for testing staging and production the difference in staging um, in, in testing staging and production appears in the pipelines and just to remind you pipelines kick in once the code is not relevant anymore once we assembled our binaries only then we actually have the the pipeline so the repositories are intended to separate projects not maturity and it means that it's not good enough what we really look for are environments actually registries per environment we want to have a separate docker registry for testing separate docker registry for staging and separate docker registry for production that makes sense that sounds good how do you implement it in docker not so easy the problem in implementing them in docker is that we have some weird really weird limitation in what we can do in terms of registries on a single host if we look at how we tag images you can see here that there is no token in the url of the docker image to express which registry on this host we want to put our httpd uh, image in we have stuff like host port username docker image name and tag 
So how do we have more than one registry per host? That's really the problem. How can we support something like that? We have registry and then Docker Dev, Docker QA, Docker Staging and Docker Prod, each and every one of them different registries. How can we do that? It's a good question. We can say, well, it's probably not possible. Let's go to other solutions. Or we can use stuff like URL rewriting by using virtual hosts and virtual posts. So basically what we try is to use this standard of host port um, uh, uh, Docker image name that translates to this URL when we talk about the protocol to actually support this. Then we'll have registry name and only that tag name. Here is one of the solutions and this is an Nginx configuration. There are others, HEProxy, HTTPD, whatever you use. And you can see here how we expose a new port 5001 and we can say whatever comes to 5001 actually forward it to this Docker dev. And then we can assign 5002 for Docker staging, 5002 for three for production or, or, or testing or whatever. So that's a nice solution and it actually works, but it requires additional setup of this HTTP URL rewriting tool. And we can do better, we can do simpler. So we can use the username as the name of the target registry. So we can just say host port and then the registry name and then the Docker image name. This is elegant and it requires zero additional configuration. And then you can have multiple registries per host, which is great. Now we have multiple registries per host and the next question will be, okay, how do we promote now an image from one registry to another? That's what I wanna do, right? We, we tested everything in testing and now this image is ready for staging. We wanna move it from my registry host 5000 whatever testing to uh, staging. How do we do that? The normal way of moving images between registries are pulling, retagging, and pushing. Now, this is fine because anyway, the register is supposed to be on different hosts. So you need to do network transfer from one to each other. But this is not the case anymore. We just saw how we set up multiple registries on the same host. And now it doesn't make any sense to pull it to the client, retag it, and push it back to exactly the same place. Instead, we really need to find a tool that knows how to do the promotion in the same tool. And there are, there are multiple tools like that. This is an example of Jeffro Container Registry. Jeffro Container Registry is an absolutely free tool for you to use, and it actually implements the exact promotion pattern that we spoke about now. You can see here how you have on the right side, multiple Docker registries, Docker dev local, testing staging, Docker prod local, all those are different Docker registries. You can see how we have a different type of registry, the remote for proxying Docker Hub. And now you probably heard about the changes that Docker Hub is making. They are actually going to clean up old and unused um, red, uh, images and they're going to throttle how many times a certain image can be pulled. And a proxy like we have the Docker Hub remote here actually protects you from both those problems. Um, first of all, you will cache all the base images that you use in this remote. And that means that whatever Docker Hub will delete won't affect you. And it also means that you only pull it from Docker Hub once. If after that, Docker Hub is blocking the request of this image because they hit the API threshold, you don't care anymore because from this moment on, you will only consume it from your own cache. So this is also very, very important, especially today.
And then we have this Docker Virtual, which is also a special kind of registry. And this registry groups different registries under the hood. So now, for example, it groups all of them in order to expose to our developers all the images that exist in the system because they need to work with all of them. They need to uh, make changes to all of them and whatever. But when the developer now deploys or your CI server now deploys a newly created image, it will always be deployed to Docker Dev Local to the start of the pipeline. And from that, the only way to get it to the next stage is to promote it using um, an API or JFrog CLI and your CI server will do that. Your CI server, Tekton for this example, will promote your Docker images from one registry to another by sending an API request or by using JFrog CLI and then the image will be promoted. What's really exciting about it is that the promotion is immediate and free because JFrog in the registry that duplicates all the storage. So once you have your layers stored, they will appear in different registries, but they will actually be stored only once. So the promotion is immediate. And then obviously when you set up your environments, your environments will only have access to the right registry. So they will only see one registry that they're allowed to see, and they won't even know about the existence of others. And this is exactly how you guarantee that your production cluster won't access by mistake any of the dev images because they don't know the dev registry even exists. They only see the, the Docker dev portal registry and those are the strongest quality gates you can hope to, uh, you can hope to and this is exactly why it's so good. So we actually have like a three side win-win-win situation here. From one side, we have single point of access to multiple registries when needed. And that's the virtual registry that you can access very, very conveniently. From the other side, those are completely isolated environments. And this is how your production servers won't even know that other registries exist. And from the third side, you have the immediate and free promotion that guarantees that whenever your Docker image is ready for the next step, the promotion will be just making it appear in the other registry without even moving any, um, any images um, on, under the knee, right? So we spoke about how important it is to take control of your dependencies, both to make sure that they are not updated without your knowledge, but also to make sure that you are isolated from the sudden changes that the remote sources of your dependencies can um, inflict on you. And I obviously talk about Docker Hub now. And while we got you just protected um, from Docker Hub, there are other dependencies. I mean, you not only build your Docker image from the base image and then do nothing with it. There is other stuff. So here is an example of the um, remote Docker uh, proxy. And you can see here how your base image is now in Docker remote cache, safe and sound. You will always be able to consume it from there no matter what Docker Hub will do with it. And you will also be able to unlimitedly access it no matter how Docker Hub throttles the request now, but there are others. And to have those others in the same tool, so you will be able to build like a cross, um, uh, a cross package metadata, if you wish, you can do it with what we call generic repositories in the in Jeffro container registry. It's basically storage for the dependencies that you build your final image with. So you can see here how, do, how the generic local stores your, um, 
uh, JDK in this example and your Tomcat in this example, and that's kind of your infrastructure, but also even your application files. So you can see here, everything which is not Docker and is not Helm can be stored in the, in the generic repository, just as files that you can pull as needed. And not only that, you can actually build the same pipelines with the same strongest quality gates based on multiple generic repositories for different maturity levels, exactly like we did with, um, with the Docker uh, registers. So you need to own your own dependencies, your base image, that's what the um, remote caching proxy is, and then your infrastructure, and this is where we saw the JDK and the Tomcat and your application files. So just to conclude, you build only once, you separate environments, you promote what you have built, and you don't rebuild in each and every environment, and then you own your dependencies. So with that, you have any questions, at Jbaruch on Twitter, find me there. That was a CDF book, um, Continuous Delivery Foundation webinar. So CDF is the right hashtag. And you go to jeffrocom uh, show notes to find the, all the links, the video, the slides, and also a raffle for thank you for being here with us. The raffle is actually quite nice. You can enter an Apple AirPods, you can win an Apple AirPods Pro. So don't forget to visit the show notes and fill the raffle there. If you have any questions, it will be a good time. We have a Q&A panel here and feel free to use it to ask. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Baruch. We really appreciate your time and expertise as always. Um, we look forward to seeing you at DevOps World 2020. Uh, you contributed a few talks to the uh, CDF Foundation Community Sponsor Track. Do you have any other talks that you're hosting there? Um, no, the, uh, I think I have two talks in the DevOps world. I'm not sure about tracks. I'm pretty sure that at least one of them is in the CDF track. The other might be in other okay. track. But yeah, absolutely exciting for the DevOps world. It will be um, it will be a great conference. So yep, let's meet you all there, and um, it will be it will be fun. Perfect. Thank you so much, and we really appreciate your time. And we will catch you on the next webinar episode. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you.